There's a seal upon my arm For there is love That is as strong as death And jealously demanding as the grief That many waters Cannot quench this love Jesus at the 
the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus be the center of my life Jesus be the center of my life From beginning to the end It will always be, it's always been you Jesus Oh Jesus Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. And every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Is he your deliverer? Is he your healer? I know this, he is our savior. He is our soon coming king. We exalt you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Say the name Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus.
reach out to you. We thank you for your presence here. Thank you for reaching out to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work and your presence here in this place today. Abide. Uh, stay with us. Let us experience more of, of you today, we ask. And transform us through the word of God, we ask. From the inside out, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You could be seated. I want to thank everybody once again for being here. And so in case you didn't know, we have these little cameras around the room. And there are many, many people that do not go to church yet. They don't go anyplace, okay? They go to maybe the necessities of life, if that. And I want to welcome you. This is the Light in Kent, in case you're watching. We are live streaming right now. And we also will have this on YouTube later on, and we'll do some broadcasts throughout the week uh, on Facebook. So this is going out on Facebook right now, live. We do not have any of you in the shot, okay? We won't do that. Don't want to embarrass anybody. And I know, you know, you might not look as good as me on camera, so we don't want to spoil the shot, okay? Boy, that's stretching it, right? There we go. I knew I could get an amen from somebody today. So, uh, hey, I succeeded. But it's so good to have you. I'm just thrilled to have, gosh, I don't know how many kids here today, just a whole room full of kids. And we're all God's kids, right? So I'm so glad to have you. I really want to meet every one of you that I haven't really had a chance to before church. And uh, I really want to do that. And kids, be kids, okay? And parents, relax, okay? If there's kids here and they make noise or they even talk to you, I'm a grandpa, okay? I know I look good for being a papa, but I am a papa, okay? And we have seven grandchildren, and most of them are boys, okay? So we love noise. Boys make noise, and it rhymes, okay? So we're here at 1417 South Water Street between Domino's and Dairy Queen. We're in Kent, Ohio. My name's Larry Knoll, and I'm just so happy you've chosen to be with us today in person or join us through our website or YouTube, Facebook. Do us a favor, whether you're here or you're watching us now or later, go out and like our videos. It really helps. I found out there's really power in that. We had, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had 1,400 views on just one video. And you know how that happens? is through people sharing and liking on your social media. It really helps us out a lot. And it's not so that I could become, you know, the next Joel Osteen or something. You know what it is? It's so that the Word of God can go out to people. We just had somebody get on right now, so isn't that exciting? I get these notifications. And so it helps get the Word out, especially to people that aren't getting out. You know, the grocery stores have made adjustments. I drove up to Giant Eagle the other day, and it had a big sign out that said, this is not open to the public anymore. This is only for pickup, see? So everybody has made adjustments, and this is an adjustment we made, and we're so glad that I have a tech crew that didn't exist the way it does today. And now they're doing things they never dreamed of doing and doing this kind of thing. And I know it's a huge headache for them. And right before church, some of them were sweating bullets thinking this isn't going to work. But we, they did get it to work. So I want to say thank you for being with us today. If you want to watch this later, you want to share this, uh, you can go to thelightingkent.com. And it should be right there in a day or two. So it takes us a little while to get that up there. I want to go to Romans 12.2 today. I want to go to Romans 12.2. And before we go there, I want to tell you a little story. All right? There's a little girl came up to a pastor. And I know this pastor. In fact, I'm going to use some of his outline in my sermon today. His name is David Cooper. And he said this little girl came up to him in church. And this little girl had written a note out while he was preaching in crayon. So she shares this note, and she says, I have a question. And on this note, her question was, why did God create Adam before he created Eve? And at the bottom, she wrote the answer. She said, everyone knows you make a rough draft before you create a masterpiece. Okay? So, guys, I'm sorry. We're just the rough draft, okay? 
You're just a rough draft. These ladies are the masterpiece. Amen, guys? Yeah, amen. So Romans 12, 2 says this, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, I'm a fan of art, okay? I mean, the stuff that's on walls and, you know, not a guy named Art. And I, you know, I think it's amazing what people can do out of nothing, just absolutely nothing. I tried to be an artist at one time in my life, okay? And I got the chalk. I don't know if you remember John Nagy, and he was on public television on Saturdays. And so you could order the John Nagy art course. And so I ordered it, well, my parents did. And I got, you know, these gray and black and white chalks and stuff, and you did chalk drawings, and then you would send them in. And, you know, so, I mean, art fascinates me that, you know. And my thing is, how can you take, sculpture is one of the things that amazes me. How can you take a hard piece of stone and turn it into something that looks human? It's perfect, it's smooth, it's round. And you're taking a piece of steel and a hammer. Now, when I get a hammer in my hands, nothing beautiful comes of it, okay? That's my fix-it tool for everything, even computers. This will work, bam, you know? And so they take hammer, chisel to stone, and they carve incredibly beautiful and accurate works of art. And one of the greatest sculptors in history you're aware of, his name is Michelangelo, okay? Michelangelo. And here, I'm going to give you a quote about what he said about sculpture. He says, the angel was in the stone, okay? He just had to be freed from his prison. Now, show a picture of the angel I'm talking about. He carved this. And people said, that's incredible. How did you do that? And he said, the angel was in there. I just had to release it from its prison of stone. He could see in this block of stone, he could see an angel like that. He could see it before it ever was there. And his viewpoint is the image is already in the stone. We just need to reveal it. We just need to let it be seen. We need to get rid of all the stuff that's blocking the view. You hear the what I'm saying? You could preach a sermon right now. You know where I'm going, right? And it's the same way that the Holy Spirit works in our life. The Holy Spirit works in the life of followers of Christ by making us, men and women, into the image of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has a vision, like Michelangelo, for what we can be. And he's trying to get rid of the stuff. Bam, 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 right? He's trying to get rid of that stuff to make us into a beautiful image of Christ. Oh, don't you love that? But I want you to know, there were times when Michelangelo gave up. Now, sometimes it was out of frustration that he just couldn't get the results he wanted. And there were other times where he just went on to something different. And as a matter of fact, he started a project of all the apostles. He was going to make these, you know, all these statues of the Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. He was going to do that. And then he got this little side job called the Sistine Chapel and kind of called him away, you know. So he couldn't, he couldn't be bivocational. So he, he had to go ahead and do that. And he never came back to this. But I want you to see this picture of Matthew. This was the first um, the one the first statue that he started to work on of the disciples. And you see, it's not finished, is it? It's still in the stone. And it's the way it looks to this day. It will never be finished. And I, and I want you to know the Holy Spirit doesn't give up on us. The Holy Spirit will never stop and go off to something else, get frustrated with you and go, that's it. How do we know this? Let's go to Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. I don't know if you have the scripture, Sophia, but I think I added it late in the game. And it says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. What is the day of Christ Jesus? That's when 
the Lord returns for his saints. Okay, so he says, until that happens, the Holy Spirit is never going to give up on you. It's going to be chisel, chisel, knock, knock, okay, until you become the beautiful thing that Jesus Christ envisions for you. So let's look at two things, and we'll be done. One is the word conform. And the scripture we looked at says, do not conform to the patterns of, of this world. Very important words, conform, pattern. Because Paul is concerned that we not only make a decision to accept Christ. You know, it's great when people we say, and we'll do this at the end, how many would like to receive Jesus Christ? It's wonderful when we do that. But we have to carry on after that decision. And that's what Paul's concerned about, that we have to dedicate ourselves to Christ. We have to offer our lives, offer our desires, offer every single thing that we are to Jesus Christ. Psalm 118 says this, bind the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. And I'm reading this and I'm going, what is this? What is this saying to me? What is this saying to me as a Christian? Because this passage in Psalms is speaking about dedication, and the word bind really got me, okay? The word bind just got a hold of me. Because back in those days, the sacrifices were brought into the tabernacle. And when I looked into the technicality of this, what they would do is they would bring a sacrifice in and they would bind it to the horn of the altar so it wouldn't get away because it was still alive. What did they bring for sacrifices? It wasn't a slab of ribs, okay? It was a living, breathing animal that they brought in. The best that they had, they would bring it in, and they would tie it up on that all to the altar and get it ready to make a sacrifice, okay? So sacrifices were brought into the ta tabernacle, and they were going to be killed on the altar. It was a blood sacrifice. Now, we are not going to be killed. We are, the Bible says, living sacrifices. So how do we apply this to ourselves? Because Christ died for our sins. We, he died so that we don't have to physically die or pay for our sins. How do we bind ourselves to the altar to remember Christ's sacrifice? Well, the way we do that, I believe, is through worship. I believe that's what that's referring to, is that when we worship, we put ourselves in a, a place that we're, not, we're never forgetting what Jesus Christ has done for us, okay? We could get into a lot of things about worship, and we might just in a minute, but I want you to know that that's an important part is that we stay close to the altar, the altar of worship, and when, because what we worship matters. But I want to go back to Romans 12 here, Romans 12, 1. It says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. How are you doing, Sophia? Are you keeping up with me? I'm all over the place. You don't have to keep up with me 100%. Now, we are to be dedicated, vigilant, and sold out to our dedication to Christ. That's what he's wanting, for us to be absolutely sold out to this, okay? Not, we, we need to take this seriously, everybody. It can't be a side job. You know, being a Christian can't be a once a week deal. In other words, this is an everyday thing. If we don't do that, then what happens is we forget and we drift away and we get away from the altar. And so w by worshiping, by being worshipers, that is that keeps us close to Christ. By being mindful, by being dedicated, that keeps us close to Christ. If I want to remember things, Mary knows she can give me a grocery list and in three things is all I can do without writing them down. For some reason, it's like, tell me three things, but if you tell me four, the, the first one just went away. And now I have the three latest ones. Is anybody like that? So that's why we have iPhones. God created iPhones so we could get out the little note feature and we could, you know, put the note in there, or we could just say, grocery list, blah, 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 okay? And Siri, you know, with her British accent says, okay, I'll make that for you. <laughs> and it's a wonderful world. Why do I do that? It's so I can remember 
for 30 minutes what my wife told me to do, okay? For just 30 minutes, I, I got to remember this list of what she needed so when I go to the grocery store, I don't have to call her and say, what was that again? Would you text me the list one more time? We write it down. And you know what? That's because I take it seriously. I like to eat, number one. Number two, I want her needs to be met, you know? And I want her to know that what you say is important. And so we need to take seriously the words of Christ. We need to take seriously the word of God. We need to take seriously and stay close to the altar of worship, which constantly reminds us. So worship is very powerful, and we're going to cover that in a minute. I wanted to look at that, this word, though, conformed. I almost got sidetracked there. Conformed, listen closely, it means fashioned. Now, ladies, you're into fashion, okay? And the root of conformed is shema, okay? Listen what it means. The outward form varies from day to day, season to season. Does that not sound like your wardrobe? Does that not sound like your closet? Listen again. The outward form varies day to day or season to season. What's fashionable today will change next year. I'm still wearing these jeans, okay, like three years later. Guys, isn't it great? This thing, who knows how old this is. It all works. But ladies are different. They are people of fashion. And they wouldn't be caught dead in some. You know, I watched a video from 1980s the other day, and I was like, would you look at that hair? <laughs> it was like, you know, super hair on these ladies and the puffy sleeves and the pastels. And I was like, ooh, doggy, you know. Things have changed. What's fashionable today will change next year, right? But your personal Shima, okay, your fashion is one thing at 10 years old. Your Shima is something else when you turn 21, isn't it? Girls, I hate to tell you this, but what you're wearing today, you'll look back and laugh at when you're 21, okay? Yeah, you too. You're going to go, I wore that, Mom? Yes. Why did you put that on me? Okay, <laughs> you know. And when you turn 50, it's going to be altogether different from when you were 21. That's fashion. That's Shima. Shema is your outward image, which is in constant transition. It's unstable, and it changes due to external pressures, style, and your desires, okay? So it's, this comes from this word, conformed, is, comes from the word Shema. And this is the same for your inward Shema, okay? Philip's translation, I'm going to read the Philip's translation to to Romans 12, 2. It says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. Do you like that? Isn't that cool? But let God remold your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good and meets all his demands and moves towards the goal of true maturity. So, can we talk? The thoughts, the predominant patterns of thinking in our world are going to try to conform your mind. Do you know that? That there is a battle for your mind. And the world that, when I say the world, the world out there that does not love God, does not serve God, does not operate according to his principles, the parts of the world, because the world is a beautiful place, but there are some dark parts of it and it seems to be creeping doesn't it it seems to be creeping closer and closer to us and those patterns of thinking are going to try to conform your mind they're going to try to change your shema and it's going to say there is no god there is only yourself you have to make it on your own and the, you know what this is that's pride that's not a good thing. And the prevailing attitudes of people in our world are going to try to conform your actions and your reactions. It's going on right now. You're different than me. You look different. You believe different. This makes you my enemy. You know what that is? That's prejudice. I like what Robert Frost says, the road not taken. You remember that poem? The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, 
And that has made all the difference. See, we have to take the one less traveled by. The world right now appears to be winning. The world philosophies, doesn't it? It seems to be gaining steam, and it could be. But what we want to do is not let the world conf to conform our Shema, okay? Don't let the world around you, as the scripture says, squeeze, squeeze you, okay, into its mold. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. So let's look at that word, transformed. Transformers. That's my special number for today. How many of you like yourself, okay? How many of you like, see, yeah, I saw a young man back there and others now finally come around. It's not a trick question. It's not that you're better than you're someone else. I'm not asking that, okay? It's not that you're perfect. You don't have to be perfect to like yourself, all right? Or you're never going <laughs> to like yourself. But there's all, I mean, there's always stuff we don't like about ourselves, right? How many could honestly say, by raising your hand, there's stuff that I would like to see changed in my own life, okay? I, c I could be better in areas. Okay, very good. Well, I have good news. We can change by the grace of God. There should be shouting right now. You should be hanging from the, well, we don't have chandeliers. We have fans, but they're moving, so don't do that. You should be excited. Listen, Romans 12, 2, it says this, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I get very discouraged about myself some days. I get very discouraged about myself because I get a glimpse of myself every now and then. Oh, is it ugly? I'm not talking about this. I know about this. I'm talking about this. Sometimes I am pure ugly, and I'm like, who was that man that just came in here and acted like that? Who was short? You know, who was short with that person and yelled at him or made a snippy remark or got an attitude towards, who was that person? Because I didn't think that was me. But every now and then I get a glimpse of myself and it's, or I'm reading the word of God and it says, this is how we should live. And I go, that's not how I'm living at all. And I get those glimpses, you know, and the good news is God is still doing this. The Holy Spirit is still doing this on me. He knows about that hard place, and he's carefully. He doesn't want to take a big, he doesn't want to hit too hard because a big piece might come out and ruin the whole thing. So he's working different angles trying to get around that hard place, and he's working and working and working. Transform comes from two words, meta, which means change, and morpho, which means form. So transform. That was easy, wasn't it? Greek 101. And metamorphosis is, all right, how many know the caterpillar turns into the butterfly thing? Do you know about that, right? I hate to bring science into you in the summer, kids, but, you know, that's science. And that's called metamorphosis. Here this thing changed. It's incredible, really, when you think about it. This, this ugly little caterpillar, well, you might think it's cute, depending on what you think is cute. And if you think a caterpillar is cute, I'm adorable, okay? So here you got this caterpillar, and he turns into a butterfly, and he goes through this metamorphosis for a while where nobody even sees him, and then out comes from the cocoon. It's amazing. Morpho, you see, it's talking about interchange, changing from the inside out, which is a permanent change, not just a makeover change. Not just a makeover change. See, I could do a makeover. I can make myself look good. And, you know, we do this. We get a new job. We go to a new church. We move to a new neighborhood. And we go, I'm going to be different here. Now, if you have not changed inside, you can do this for a while. And, you you know, like if you're a crabby person, you say, I'm not going to be crabby at all. I'm going to be the nicest person in the neighborhood. And you're like, oh, that's so sweet. Yes, walk on my grass. I love it when people walk on my grass. Ah! You know, and... You know, we fake it, and we think we can fake it till we make it, right? And we just keep faking it, and it's not really who we are. And finally, Mr. Krabby shows up one day because we ran out of coffee or something, and it just hits us wrong, and Mr. Krabby shows up. And, and, and you know, it's finally there you are. 
It's like so, in a movie once somebody said, no matter where you go, there you are. Okay? <laughs> so we were talking about worship earlier, and true change is really true worship. When we sing up here, this is beautiful. It's such a part of my life. I love music. I love worship through music. But it's not the only worship there is. Worship is change that takes place from the inside out. And we can sing about our love for God, and we can wear the T-shirts, cool T-shirts, right? Oh, and we can post stuff on Facebook or Instagram or wherever we like to post things. And we li- I talked to a man the other day, a man from Alabama, and we, I reached out to him because his wife left him. And he said, does it make sense, Larry? He said, just the other day, she was posting stuff, scriptures, and encouraging other people. And then the next day, it changed. Next day, the post changed. The people she was reaching out to changed. And it was within no time at all that she informed me she was leaving. Five children, guys, five children, dad having to handle it all by himself. I said, I'm just, going to give you, I'm just going to give you a little good news here, okay? I don't think she changed overnight, all right? I think she was holding up something, saying, this is who I am. Look, this is who I am. Do you like it? When really she was struggling on the inside with who she really was. And we get tired, and then we go, boom. And everybody goes, wow, they fell off a cliff. No, they didn't. They were walking along that cliff the whole time. So, see, we can do exterior changes, but they're not permanent changes. And anybody can. You can go to church, everybody. I'm glad you're here. But church doesn't transform you, okay? We're going to inspire you. We're going to try to give you information. But we're talking about the renewing of our mind. The way we think determines the way we live. And this is what makes worship so powerful. Let me read this real, real quickly to you because this is what David Cooper gave me. Uh, And it's so good. It says, if we worship money, we become materialists. If we worship pleasure, we become hedonists. If we worship power, we become control freaks and manipulators. If we worship fame, we become gods in our own eyes. If we worship our abilities, we become humanists. If we worship our intellect, we become atheists. And if we worship self, we become narcissists. But... When we worship God in spirit and in truth, we are transformed into God's likeness. You are who you worship. You are what you worship. Are you hearing this? And so then others see Jesus in us as we become worshipers, as we begin to to be transformed from the inside out. So let me read this Phillips translation. I'm going to close here. This Philip's translation again, it's really an interesting version of the Bible. And he says this in uh, Romans chapter um, 2, verses 1 and 2, or 12, 1 and 2. It says, with eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him and acceptable by him. Don't let the world around you squeeze you or conform you into its own mold, but let God remold, transform your minds from within so that you may prove in practice that the plan of God for you is good and meets all his demands and move towards the goal of true maturity. I don't know. I hope today that your eyes have been opened very clearly to God's mercies. I really do. Can I, I mean, do you know today, do you know that God loves you? And he wants the, he, he looks at you so differently than you probably even look at yourself. I know he looks at you differently than anybody else. When people look at us, guys, when we look at each other, we look at the mistakes. We look at the problems. We look at the negatives. We look at the things that aren't great. That's our nature. He's a nice guy, but... What do you think about so-and-so? Well, she's okay, but. There's always a but. There's always that exception. But you know what? God knows all that. He says, when I see them, I see this masterpiece. 
He's like Michelangelo. He, I believe he created that gift of sculpting. And he says, I, I know others just see a slab of rock and it's half finished. But I see what this could be. I see what this person could be. You know, that's the love of God, isn't it? If he can love you past all your stubbornness, all that stuff that you like, you think is great, and it's not, man, God loves you so much, and he wants the best for you. The question is, are you willing to give yourself to him as a living sacrifice? Are you ready to, to bind yourself to the horns of the altar, as Psalm said? Are you ready to worship him? Let's pray today. Dear Lord Jesus, we just come to you and I pray that you'd move on our hearts. Move in our hearts today. Our minds have taken in things today. Maybe, maybe it's been enlightening to people, and I'm, I'm glad if it was enlightening, but I don't want enlightenment. I want transformation. I want my life to be different. I want all of our lives to be different. I want us to begin to be transformed into your likeness. God, I pray the Holy Spirit would move upon our minds and our hearts today. Don't let us be satisfied with being that block of stone. Put a desire in our hearts to love you and to be like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you, I want to speak to a certain group of people today. Maybe you have never offered yourself to Christ. You're not a follower of Christ. Maybe you're, very, you're far from God today, and you need to do that. I don't know who's in this room. I don't know your story, and I don't know the people that will be watching this, either watching now or later. I mean, you might be in your home watching this later. You might be, you know, at work, at lunch hour watching this. I have no idea. People watch these videos at the weirdest times. All over the globe, they've, they've watched these, and I don't understand that, but I know this. Right now, God is speaking to you, and if you have not accepted Him as your Savior, if, you, if you're, you know, you're still holding on to yourself as to be in control of yourself, God says, hey, let go of that. Let me do the work in you and make you something beautiful. That's what He wants to do today. And if that is where you're at, if that's where you're at today, let me just ask you to pray a prayer with us. I call it the Jesus prayer. And it's just asking the Lord. It's taking a first step towards Christ and asking him to become the master of your life, to become the sculptor of your life. That's all we're doing is putting ourselves in his hands. Are you ready to do that today? Are you ready? Is something speaking to your heart today and saying, this is for you? And if so, I would like everybody in this room, and if you're watching, let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I know that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust and follow you as my Lord. And help me to do your will in your name. Amen. I'm just thinking as we're praying that today, maybe somebody's life is changing in an incredible way. I'm just thinking that today, that they're making that first step, that first step towards God. And I just want to encourage you, don't let this be the last step towards God. I want you to dedicate yourself to living for Christ. And if you're if you're here today and you are a follower of Christ, listen, I want you to become a worshiper. And that doesn't mean the music part here. I do, like I said, this is important. This is a great part of it. But this has to do with allowing Christ to be in control and as a Christian, we think we make that decision and it's all over. But God has so much more for us. He has so much more for your life. And he wants you. 
I mean, he wants you to just turn yourself over to him. And I believe that that is what we need to do. We need to bind ourselves to the altar, as that scripture says. Dedicate ourselves to a life of worshiping God. And I mean, with all the messaging out there today, I can tell you there's only one truth. Jesus, remember that song? Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. So as we live our lives for Christ, we need to always keep that in mind. Stay close to the altar. Keep Christ on our mind. How do we do that? Reading the Word. Listening to the Word. Singing the Word. Talking about the Word. Don't let Sunday be the high point of your spiritual week. Find some time this week to be with God and be in His Word. Well, I want to thank you today for being with us. And let's just close with a word of prayer. Can we do that? Father God, we just offer ourselves to you as living sacrifices. We don't want to be squeezed into the mold of this world. We want to stay in your process of transformation. And keep us, guard us, and fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Nothing else in our life that will matter like you. Let us dedicate our life to you. May we bring you glory. And God, also let us point others to Jesus this week through our life. We ask in Christ's name. Amen.